Okay, so uh, my name is Peter. I work at Protocol Apps in the IPDX team. That stands for Interplanetary, Interplanetary Developer Experience. Uh, and our main goal is to improve developer experience within IP Stewards team. So you might wonder, what am I doing here? Oh, closer. Uh, I thought I was being a bit too loud. <laughs> so that's the other way around. Uh, all right. But uh, so one thing that that we noticed is that uh, recently uh, a lot more HTTP gateway implementation started springing up, and uh, they started taking quite a lot of time from IP stewards to actually help with with their development. So we we saw a place for us to to help with that, uh, and that was the the testing space. Uh, so first we had to answer the question: What are HTTP gateways? And Luckily, uh, they are quite well spec'd out in the IBFS spec, so that was really helpful. Uh, they are just uh, the access, the HTTP access point to IBFS network, and that was uh, good enough of an explanation for us to to get started. And the the things that are currently parts of the specification and things like what what does it mean to be a path or a trustless gateway? Uh, what does it mean to to implement a DNS link or subdomain features or redirects files. So ideally, we'll have a way to test all of those and even more once we uh, expand the spec. So the question that, that we put in front of ourselves is how do I make sure that my implementation conforms to the specification that we have written down? And uh, for the time being, the, the answer was, uh, well, you're on your own. You have to implement your own tests, uh, and that's that's what happened in Cuba, for example. We did have quite an extensive test suite, but it was impossible to reuse it in any other place. Uh, when we had a new implementation coming up, they would have to do this exact same exercise from scratch, and that seemed wasteful because, uh, like, we already did this work, and in Cuba we already found uh, plenty of edge cases that that might not think of the first time there they get to write in the test. But uh, as we thought more and more about this, uh, we realized that that's not really the only question that we like answering, because it might be also useful to make sure that your implementation of the gateway conforms to the specification. Me as a user, I might be interested in actually confirm, confirming it myself, whether what you're telling me is true. So that's another thing that, that we do keep in mind uh, when working on the testing tool for, for the gateways. And that's how the gateway conformance testing tool came to be. Uh, and we <coughs> set one and only one goal for it, which is to ensure compliance with the specification. Yay! <laughs> so we knew what we wanted to do, and that uh, was only the, the easy part of how to do it. <laughs> Luckily, the, we are dealing with HTTP gateway, so we uh, have some expertise in how to make HTTP requests and verify the responses. So we thought that that's, that's, that's something we can implement. Uh, so without further ado, let me just show you how a test in our testing tool looks like. Uh, first of all, the, the testing tool is written in Go, however, we do expect contributions from uh, people coming from many different language ecosystems. So uh, when we are writing this tool, we try to keep that in mind and make sure that uh, the way we expect people to, to write the tests in the tool isn't really like, that language specific. Like we, we wanted it to be readable to to anyone familiar with programming. Uh, so let's let's maybe analyze this this one particular. Uh, test case that, that takes uh, mm, car support in, in gateways. So first of all, uh, we do have static fixtures in our, our testing tool. So that means that uh, we have we, <coughs> we can have a, a car file, which is our fixtures that defines all the data that uh, we will be requesting from the gateway. And as long as, as your gateway provides this data, the, the test should pass. Uh, what's more, we can we can reuse this, this fixture when we write our test case. So for example, here, uh, when you look a bit lower in like 
22 to this. Uh, we are not really hard coding CIDs anymore. We are just reading the same car file that should be available in your gateway and extracting root CID in this case. Uh, next part, uh, you just define a name for a test case. So that's that's pretty straightforward, but that's not all verbosity that you get here. You can even uh, write, write more verbose hints associated with each specific test case. Uh, also, not only test cases, like you can you can assign hints to, to any check that you might make uh, for the for the response, and that's really helpful for debugging. So when something goes wrong, uh, you not only get the name of the test that failed, but also what it was trying to do, a, a bit more context on that, and also context on the specific check, like, oh, for example, here, why are we even expecting the, the specific content type or specific content length and that's well, uh yeah that's is really useful when when debugging test behaviors uh, so then we come to like the meat of the tests like you have to define what kind of requests to the gateway you want to make so in this part you just specify anything you might need to uh to specify for an http request and finally, you have multiple response validators. So here we are validating the, the status code and, and some headers. And our goal was to, to make it sort of read close to how natural language does. So you're making a request for a path where at the root CID of our static fixture, we are requesting sub tier and ASCII to take stuff. We make a request with an accept header uh, for application vnd.iplod.car and we expect it to come back to us with a 200 status codes and a content type header uh, and a content and empty content length header uh, so that was the goal that's that's how it looks like and now i'm going to show you how to how to run it uh, because the test case itself is not that interesting if we can't run it so what do we do first? First, we have to start our gateway. In this case, uh, I'm going to start an, uh, a Kubo gateway in the offline mode. Uh, it comes up pretty quickly when it's just a screenshot. Uh, and it also told us that, that this already listening, uh, already also started gateway at port 8080. That's a really useful information because that's, that's what we are going to need for our test tool to know where to make those requests. Uh, so then, uh, since we're running Kubo Gateway in uh, offline mode, uh, <clears throat> it won't be able to get fixtures from anywhere on the network. We do actually have to explicitly uh, load the fixtures into the offline gateway. Uh, so we are just using the, the command that, that Kubo provides, but it might be different for different gateway implementations. Uh, so that worked as well. And finally, we're all set to to run run the test case. Uh, the gateway conformance testing tool is a is a CLI tool that comes at the name of gateway conformance. One of the comments it provides is is test. Uh, then you just have to provide a gateway URL of the gateway that you want to test. Uh, and here in particular, we're also providing some additional arguments because we only want to run. Uh, a single test rather than all of them. Uh, some other arguments that you could provide is uh, specific fe uh, features of that that you might want to test. For example, if you were only interested in testing the subdomain gateway part of the spec uh, that's supported by the by the CLI tool, you could you could provide it with with an argument that says only test the subdomain gateway spec. Uh, but here we're just running one test. So let's see what happens and let's open the results in VS Code. Uh, and it didn't quite work, unfortunately. So some things did, but not all of them. When we look a little bit more, more closely at, at the results, we see that the check for the content type header did work. So that's cool. However, unfortunately, when we are checking the content length header, it, it blew up. So we get a detailed report of what happened. First, we get the name of the 
the test within which the, the failure happened, then the more <coughs> insightful description of the context uh, of the test. And finally, the, the core of the issue, which is the, the error that we encountered. So here it says that, that uh, our content link header check was expected expecting an empty value, but in fact, it got the actual content link. But here we get a helpful tip that, that we were expecting the response to be streamed. So we weren't expecting an exact length in the in the response. Uh, so what was going on there? Uh, so I can tell you that that the the test itself is correct. The spec does make sense. And Kubo is implemented as it should, really. But as we found out, uh, the HTTP uh, package in the uh, code language library always sets content link header. So uh, we did raise that with, with Go folks, uh, but we didn't hear back about it yet. Uh, but that's that's how an, an example of an error looks like in, a, in our testing tool. But I wouldn't be myself if I didn't also tell you how to automate this and not have to run it by hand. So let's get straight into that and analyze the uh, the workflow definition for GitHub action that would do that for you on, for example, every PR or every push. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward. Like we do provide a GitHub action that, that lets you download the picture. So all the car files that, that you might want to import to your gateway, if you want to run in an offline mode that don't get it from, from the network. Uh, then there is the part of starting the gateway. So that's up to each implementation, like we're country impose the way in which like you should be bringing your gateway up uh, so in this case like we're also starting uh, a kubo gateway then importing fixtures so that's also gateway specific and finally we're running tests so we do provide another uh, github actions that's responsible for for running the tests it takes again just the gateway url as the argument but also a couple of uh, find names for reports it can create. So it can create report uh, the JSON, XML, HTML, and Markdown reports. So yeah, whatever you prefer, <laughs> there is a report for that. They have slightly different formats. Uh, all may be useful, as uh, we're going to look in a second into two. But it also uh, takes additional arguments. So here, for example, in case of Koopa, we are skipping this, uh, this particular test case, the content length header check in the in the gateway car test, because we know there is there is no way it's going to work. But we would like all the other testing should happen. So we can we can request that from, from our testing tool. And finally we just share the results by uploading them to, to artifacts and, and setting the summary for the job. Uh, so the summary looks a little bit like that for a success case. It just uh, really a summary of how many tests run, how many were skipped, and that's all. If there were failures, it would show uh, inline reports for, for those failures. So you wouldn't even have to download anything. You could just inspect it directly there in the job, uh, which is quite nice. But if you want a bit more details, we also the HTML reports uh, might be your thing, because here you can like, click through everything, get, get uh, more specific data on what kind of outputs each test case produced, how long it took, when it started, when it finished, uh, what exactly was run. Uh, so where are we right now? Uh, we are already running this testing tool in, in three projects. We are testing Kubo Gateway. Uh, we are testing Car Gateway that lives in the Boxer repository. And we're also running this uh, on PRs in, in Bifrost Gateway. Um, so for a project that's it's quite young. Uh, that's pretty cool that we're already there and already help helping uh, developers. Uh, we ported around 30% of the tests that currently live in uh, in Kubo to the new testing tool. Uh, but we aim to, to get to 100% at some point. We don't have a date set, but we're making uh, quite pro good progress on, on, on these fronts. Uh, so what's next for us, apart from getting to migrating 100% of the tests from Kubo to the new testing tool. Uh, we'd also like to, to make sure that we do cover the entire spec. Uh, we haven't really 
reading that, that out yet and do, so can't tell you exactly what it entails and how long it's going to take, but that is our uh, overarching goal. Uh, we think it would also be amazing if we could integrate more closely with the spec contribution process. Uh, so think of like when you may propose a new spec, it will be great if at the same time you could write tests for it, maybe some small implementation of them. That's, that would give everyone more context about what the change is really about. Does it actually work? Uh, is it feasible to implement? So that's, that's something we do have in mind. And uh, a little bit closer to, to today, we are also running a gateway conformance testing workshop on Wednesday. Uh, it's mainly targeted at Kubo maintainers, but if you're interested in testing out the tool and seeing how implementing new tests work, uh, we really want feedback, so please come. It's going to be, we won't give you that much instructions uh, in, this, in this workshop because we want to see like how developers react to being presented with it, uh, but it, we're going to be there to, to gather feedback and to help you along the way. So it should be should be fun. And also one more thing that uh, me and Russell got to talking. Uh, we think it would be really cool if we could adapt it somehow to, to be able to test also the service gateway, uh, service worker gateway, uh, but we're not there just yet. Uh, and and that's it. Here is the repo. It's IPFS slash gateway dash conference. Thank you. I think we can get that gateway ready to write our own upper entire impact to do. So uh, how many how many bugs have you found? One in go <laughs> implementation. So that's one. Uh definitely a couple already. Uh Laurent would be would be better uh, to better suited to answer that because he was closer to to actually to the work uh, of migrating the test from from Kubo to uh, to our new testing tool. We definitely seen like at least a dozen of of cases where we're in Kubo tests. Uh, we are actually copy pasting the same tests and changing the description of the test, but not really what it was doing. So. <laughs> uh, that's like another area of things that, that we already discovered. Yeah, but uh, like even for that, like it's been it's been beneficial to to go through this this work and have a more structured way to to write the test than than uh, through bash and sharpness. Cool. And um, is there thoughts on like adding randomness to the test as well? Oh, sorry, uh, did it hear that? A adding randomness or like generating like random test cases. Oh, uh, not yet. Like we, we didn't get it. So right now we, we do focus on trying to, to make sure that, that we don't lose any of the expertise that we built up in, in Kubo testing suite. And we tr want to, to preserve it in the new testing. So uh, when it comes to like development or new novel ideas for testing, uh, we'll get to that after. Um, I, I know Laurent is not here, but I had a conversation about this with him. So, um, maybe like channeling Laurent is that, uh, <laughs> he has a, um, uh, I think he has a proof of concept where he's testing, in, he, he's testing false positives by introduce by, uh, mutating a percentage of responses, introducing random bytes to headers or bodies, just to make sure we don't have tests, oh, yeah. which always pass. And that's been uh, the bane of existence in Kubo because for a while we had te we had oh we have everything passing but that someone forgot to uh, add like a double ampersand somewhere um, in the bash and it was always passing. Uh, so this the, the the killer feature of this test suite is that we will know when uh, it's actually like where's this like regression? It will be like self testing itself. Um, and I have like a question, actual question for oh. myself. But it, it, what, before you begin, I, I just want to ask that. Yeah, I, I did forget about that. But yeah, it, it's it's really clever. That's like where, what what Lauren came up with. Like basically generates like random payloads for HTTP requests, and then basically we run like each test case with this random payload a couple of times, and if it passes on all the all the occasions, then like we. We know that something's going wrong yeah, because yeah. we are not testing anything. Yeah, you expect you you know it should fail. If it passes, you know there's something wrong with the tests, and that's like the nice inversion of 
It's running yep. tests twice, actually, against itself. Uh, I have a question because um, uh, I really like your slide that you suggested that this is not test suits just for implementers, but also for, for users. There may be like multiple commercial or non-commercial gateways that you may trust. They may give you like a free tier, but then you maybe you want to verify what's the value of the product, right? Uh, but then I think uh, the, another demographic that be could benefit from this is developers who want to build on IPFS. Maybe they want to integrate a gateway library in a specific language into their uh, their code. Um, did uh, did you have any like initial thoughts about uh, what should be the approach? I, I I I understand that this is like a tool that people building a library could run in on their CI. But is there like an idea? of creating something like web platform tests uh, website where project li kind of like libraries and projects could sign in to show that they are conformant as like a marketing strategy for developers. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's that's also why we're working closely with with Robin on that. So like <laughs> he's the, he's the perfect person to to lead us through how to make it a, a reality because of his his previous work with uh, web platform tests. Uh, so yeah, that's that's definitely a plan at some point in the future, but not quite yet. 